Welcome back, this is Dean with Blue Ridge Overland Gear, and this is video number two on our series on radio communications. If for some reason you missed the first one, click this link right here, go back and watch that one. Also, this is building off of our trip planning video series, which if you've not gone back and seen that one where we explain a level one, a level two, and a level three trip, click that link and make sure you watch that one as well because we're gonna be talking about a level two trip today. Now, just to recap, a level two trip means you're gonna be spending a couple nights off grid and you're gonna be kind of flirting the fringe, fringe edges of the grid, um, but, but you're still gonna have access to things like emergency services and tow trucks, so you're not completely off grid. Now, again, just like with a level one trip, a cell phone is still gonna be your primary form of communication. However, being on the fringes of the grid means this thing may not work all the time. We are thinking, we're thinking. What are you thinking about? Now I've traveled up and down the East Coast. I've traveled out West. I've got a pretty good cell phone carrier and most of the places I've gone, even some places where I think I wouldn't get signal, I've gotten signal but sometimes I can only get maybe like one bar or I can get basic cell signal, but not digital, or I can get 3G, but not 4G. Well, the best thing I can recommend for that is this right here. Now, what I have right here is a cell phone booster. Now, a cell phone booster is comprised of three components. The first component is gonna be the external antenna. This is on the outside of your vehicle, and this is the antenna that connects to the cell phone tower. That connects to this. This is what actually amplifies the signal. That connects to this. This is the internal antenna. This is what connects to your phone. Now, one thing that's super important about cell phone boosters is they are not magical devices. They will not give you a signal where there is none. The only thing that they can do is take a weak signal and boost it, hence their name, cell phone booster. Now, I, I wanna make sure you understand that because I've had a couple friends buy these things and they're like, dude, I was down in this valley and I still couldn't get reception. Well, that's because that valley has natural blockers on either side that you're not gonna actually get any reception because you're below the horizon line for that cell signal. Same thing if you go out west. If you're in the middle of the desert, and there's no cell phone towers, guess what? This is not gonna give you a signal. But again, on a level two trip, you're gonna be kind of on the fringes or you're gonna be in areas where you're gonna kind of be in and out of signal a little bit. And that's where these boosters are really, really useful. Now again, just like on a level one trip, cell phones are great when you're trying to call somebody far away, but they're not exactly practical when you're trying to talk to somebody relatively close and that's where radios come into play. So when it comes to radios, the go-to radio right now in the Overland community is the GMRS, or Global Mobile Radio Service. Now there are two types of GMRS radios. There are handheld radios, and then there are mobile radios. So right here in front of me, I have a five watt handheld radio, I have a five watt mobile radio, a 15 watt mobile radio, and a 40 watt mobile radio, all of which work on GMRS and all of them operate the same way. They're all channelized, they can all talk to each other, and obviously the more wattage you have, the further that signal will carry and the clearer it will be. Now, the reason these radios are so popular is because with a five watt radio, you actually have anywhere from five to 10 miles in range. A 15 watt radio, you can be anywhere from 10 to 20 miles in range. And with a 40 watt radio, you can be anywhere from 10 all the way up to potentially 25 miles in range in the right optimum conditions. So one of the problems you're gonna run into with the smaller five watt radios, like either a handheld or this five watt mobile radio, is that the person in the middle of the group can probably talk to everybody, but the person at the front of the group may not be able to talk to the person in the back of the group and vice versa. Now what is it? I'm having trouble with the radar, sir. What's wrong with it? I've lost the bleeps, I've lost the sweeps, and I've lost the creeps. The what? The what? And the what? You know, the bleeps. That's why a lot of people will sometimes upgrade to the 15 watt or the 40 watt mobile radios when they're in a little bit of a larger group. If you're in a group of like say two to three vehicles, either the handheld or the five watt mobile radio is gonna be fine. 
And the reason the mobile radio will do a little bit better than the handheld is, even though they're the same wattage, the mobile radio will have an externally mounted antenna, which kind of gives it just a little bit of an advantage over just the handheld. Now, if your group is say, anywhere from five to seven vehicles, again, you're gonna be a little bit more spread out. And so the lead vehicle can talk to the vehicle in the back. That's where the 15 watt uh, mobile radio will come into play just because it's gonna have a little bit more broadcast wattage. And if you're in a larger group, say anywhere from eight to 12 vehicles, that's where the 40 watt radio will come into play because again, you're gonna be able to get this spread out a little bit more. And if you're in terrain where there's a lot of hills or a lot of tree coverage, the more powerful radio will be able to cut through that a little bit better than the handheld or the lower wattage mobile radios. Now, personally speaking, I actually run one of these 40 watt mobile radios in my Jeep, because more often than not, I'm the guide, I'm in the front of the group, and I wanna make sure I can talk to everybody. Now, most of the people in my groups end up usually having this 15 watt radio because it's kind of like that Goldilocks radio. It's got a little bit more power than the handhelds and the five watt mobile radio, but it's not as expensive as the 40 watt radio. The other nice thing is this is a relatively small radio. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room on the dash. You can actually unplug the microphone from this and it's not very big, it's not very obtrusive. Here's the antenna that comes with the five watt and 15 watt Midland mobile radios. As you can see, it's not very big. Plus it's got a magnetic base, meaning you can stick this on the hood, stick this on the roof, and it's there when you want it. And then when you don't, you can again, coil it up, throw it away in the glove box. Now, if you are somebody who says, hey, I'm gonna be using this radio a lot, and I want a little bit more reception out of my radio, but I don't wanna jump all the way up into the 50 watt, that's when we're gonna to turn to my man Sasquatch over here. Now the antenna that Sasquatch is holding right here, this is a plus six dB whip antenna. Now again, I can get all sciency and nerdy on you and talk about all the cool features that make this thing better. Key thing is, as you can see, the antenna is both longer, has a coil, has a spring base in it, and this thing gets permanently mounted to your vehicle. Now there's a host of different options out there for how it mounts to your vehicle, but the key thing is that again, with a bigger antenna, you will have better reception. You will also have better transmission. So if you get one of these 15 watt radios and you want just a little bit more performance out of it without having to spend the money to get a 40 watt radio, this is probably gonna be your best investment. Now, one key thing that is super important about antennas you need to make sure you have an antenna that's appropriate for your radio. This is a GMRS antenna, not a CB antenna. Same thing, if you buy one of those red cool fiberglass antennas for CBs, it's not gonna work on your GMRS radio. Um, so when you are looking at radio antennas, make sure you buy one that is intended for use with the radio that you're using. So just to recap, for a level two trip where you're gonna be spending a little bit of time off grid or there on the fringes of the grid, where you're gonna have access to tow trucks and emergency services, but they might be just a little bit further away than on a level one trip, again, your cell phone is gonna be great. But when you're on the fringes of the grid and you're not getting the best reception, that's where a cell phone booster will help enhance that signal. Now, if you're traveling in a group and you got a couple vehicles you're trying to talk to all at the same time, that's where GMRS radios really, really shine. And again, your two options are either the handheld or the mobile radio. And again, you can kind of determine which one you wanna be at depending on the size of your group and how much money you wanna spend. That wraps everything up for a level two trip. In the next video, we're gonna be looking at what you need for a level three trip, which is where you're gonna be spending almost all of your time completely off grid in remote territory where you don't have easy access to things like tow trucks and emergency services. So we're gonna go over some different communication tools that will help you in that scenario.